My name is Colleen Cooney. I teach home economics and global citizenship. Approximately 10 years ago, our school was approached and asked if we were willing to take part in a school network project based on development issues in the Global South. As I had spent some time in Uganda myself, we felt that we would do a small project with a senior group of students where we researched life in Uganda, the challenges facing people living in Uganda, and we compared it to life here in Ireland. This created the spark and the interest among our students that led us on to do our project on fair trade. We decided that fair trade was a good starting point for our school because fair trade would embrace the three main areas of sustainable development, which would be social, economic and environment. So we began in our school by learning about the philosophy of fair trade. So basically the philosophy of fair trade would be that the fair trade logo will only be awarded to businesses and farmers that have respected certain environmental conditions. They also ensure there is no child labour has been used and also it ensures that those people who follow these conditions that they themselves will be paid a fair wage and they will be given what is called a fair trade premium that will be then invested into their local community. Our transition years which are a senior group of students they learned about fair trade then they went on to peer teach students in junior classes about the fair trade philosophy. The next step was then that we ensured that all students in the school were familiar with fair trade philosophy and students and teachers came on board and a lesson was given to all classes in the school. We had to make a very concrete changes in the school in that we had to ensure that a certain amount of fair trade products would be used in the school as the norm. So the teachers came on board and agreed to change to fair trade tea, using fair trade tea and fair trade coffee where possible. The home economics department came on board by also uh, trying to source and use as many fair trade products as possible. And soon this extended onto, into the breakfast club who also use fair trade products for the breakfast club and also the after school club. From here we went on to apply for certification and we were awarded fair trade status as a school. From here, I suppose the ripple effect began. It extended then into the whole school community and from here, groups of students went out and peer taught students between the age of four and 12. Our local junior school, national school, it achieved fair trade status and soon our local town was awarded fair trade status also. So this just goes to show that alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much, in the words of Helen Keller. We also looked at how we could use our waste in a more productive way and as a result a group of junior sc students in the school introduced compost bins. These compost bins are found in the corridors, they are found in the staff room, they are found in the practical rooms. Everybody in the school contributes to the composting. People are recycling their fruit and veg waste. The construction studies rooms uh, now save their uh, sawdust and they use this for the compost. The home economics room where we would do a lot of cookery. We are now very conscious of what waste we can recycle. All of this is collected every second day and used in the school garden. The art department have been very active in recycling wood and they have used old wooden crates and pallets to make wooden benches for our school garden. I have found that it has made them more conscious of the world around them, that what they do and their actions may have repercussions on others. I find that they are much more switched on to what's going on in the news and I feel that it has just broadened their interest in the whole planet.